I don't trust a visionary who has no values. Your big vision doesn't impress me because I don't know who you're sleeping with in the night. <laughs> values are more important than vision. Principles more important than power. And sometimes we pursue the academics of leadership and not the morals of leadership. We become experts with clay feet. Skillful people with no foundation. This is dangerous. And that's what we have today. Let me give you quickly the 12 keys of leadership. You want to become a leader? Take a photograph of this and then I'll charge you later. The 12 keys to become an effective leader. Number one, what is it? Purpose. Number two, passion. Number three, compassion. Number four, vision. Number five, principles. Number six, trust. Number seven, competence. Number eight, inspiration. Number nine, priority. Number 10, moral conviction. Number 11, dedication to a cause. And number 10, character. And I put it on the bottom because it is the foundation of the whole building. Leadership is vital. The most powerful force of a leader is character. It's a force. It has its own energy. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish I had two weeks to talk to you about this. I really wish I did. Because please read the book. I spent 12 years with that book. When I realized that character, a person with character, don't have to say a word. They can walk into a room and change the atmosphere by their physical presence. There's such a force. Write this down, please. Number two, character protects the leader. It protects the leader's life, his leadership, and his legacy. Character protects the leader's life. It protects the leader's leadership and protects the leader's legacy. When Mr. Bill Clinton died, what will you remember? That young lady's name still comes back. His legacy was canceled. Who's more famous, Delilah or Samson? You answer the question. Ladies and gentlemen, your character is all you got. And I hope that this, this summit will put so much fear in you that you will never again consider the possibility of selling your character for any price. <laughs> Clap, man. You make me nervous. You sound like you all want to make deals with your character. I would rather walk away from everything and keep my character. I'd rather lose all of your friendships and keep God's love with me. Don't sell your character. Write this down, please. Character is the manifestation that shapes who you will become. Your character controls your development. It tells you what you will become. You can actually control what you will become by protecting your character. Without character, every other aspect of leadership is at risk. You know that. You've seen the flies fall. You've seen the big, heavy players collapse. Somehow, we think we are so smart, 
it will never happen to us. I've come to make an announcement. It will. If you tamper with your character. Character extends the longevity of a leader. Write it down. If you want to make it to the end, it's not difficult. Just decide in this session that you will live the rest of your life protecting the integrity of your character. I won't leave you without instruction before we close. I'll show you what character is so you can know exactly what to do with it. But it will determine your longevity. In my circles that I move in, which is a few circles, I meet people in politics, in business, in religion, in, in all kinds of corporate settings, and I could almost M out the ones who won't make it. I meet some powerful preachers, and after two minutes with them, I go, this one is on his way down. And everybody's clapping while I'm weeping. Because they confuse gift with character. Your gift is only as safe as your character. Your gift can never keep you. How many gifted people today are walking the streets because they violated their character? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you what I call the moral force of character. Character is the long, the long, in the long run, rather, it is the decisive factor in the life of an individual and also of a nation alike. Roosevelt said that. This is the president of a country. Maybe we need more presidents to, to learn that statement. He says, character in the long run is the decisive factor in the life of an individual and of nations alike. I like this one. This is Miles Monroe. Here's what he says. A leader's gift is only as safe as the character that contains it. Your character exists to hold your gift. It is only as safe as your character. What you are now could be destroyed next week. Another one I thought was interesting, and you'll find this in a new book. I talk about this. A leader's values are personal, but they are never private. I repeat, as a leader, your values are personal, but they're never private. In leadership, there's no distinction between your personal life and your public life. We get this idea. Somehow, it exists in our leadership psyche that what I do privately is no one's business. It is everybody's business. The minute you spend my tax money, your private life is my business. Oh, boy. You know, you hear stories of uh, politicians going on vacation or going to a seminar somewhere, and they spend $50,000 for a weekend, and now they are in jail. But it was a private seminar. Your values are personal, but they're not private. I keep myself privately clean to protect my public life. How about you? Because your private life can cancel your public life. What are you doing right now that we don't know about that can destroy your future? You came to this conference to cancel that behavior.
Because you are too important to us to lose you. The gift you have is so vital that the world will be robbed by your private foolishness. I need you to be faithful. I need that. Because you are my friend. Everywhere I go, I carry all of you with me. Everywhere I go. Even in the dark. I carry you with me. Because I say, they trust me. Live with people's trust on your head. That's all you get. 